So we don't work with retail or distribution or uh, marketing side. We strictly work with business partners, and that be developers, publishers, or studios, whatnot. Um, and uh, the reason we haven't been in Estonia so much before isn't because Estonia isn't important. It's just we are very few um, in the office. You think Nintendo is very big, etc. We, we're literally four people um, doing this um, oh. job. Uh, and that's across Europe, Australia, and Africa. Okay. Um, and India. 50% <laughs> <laughs> so of Europe. It's a lot of area to cover with four people. So only recently can we actually um, cover uh, Northern and Eastern Europe. But you know, I'm, we're really glad that we can be here. Um, and we basically want to talk to you um, directly and really um, have a dialogue with all of you. Um, and this is really the, the reason we're here. So quick introduction about myself. So my name is Mao Sugiyama. Uh, I'm a business development manager at Nintendo of Europe uh, in the European publisher business, i.e. the party business uh, is my email address. So you can also uh, just keep that um, for yourself here. Um, and if you email that, you know, to, to me, I, I, I get the email. It's not like an alias or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I check the inbox every day. Um, and uh, we're based in Frankfurt um, in oh. Germany. So um, Nintendo of Europe is based in, in, in Germany. That's where the headquarters is. Um, and we basically look after the entire uh, European market from that office. Um, we do have subsidiaries um, like Nintendo UK, Nintendo France, uh, Nintendo Italy, Iberia. Uh, it goes on. Um, and they are all in each market, but they don't have the business function because they are there for sales and marketing. So actually for business uh, and for par uh, partners, uh, publishers and developers relations, it's actually again down to four people in Frankfurt in, in our department. Um, and I have a colleague with me today here. Hi guys, hey. my name is Pedro. I'm a marketing administrator also at NOE. And uh, you can see um, our email address. We are four people taking care of this. Um, so you can email us. We take care of additional support um, for marketing side, like when the game launches or big beats are. You can email us, say, hey, this is happening. Everything is, is done. It's being checked from our advertising team. And then we can uh, talk with our, uh, with our marketing teams to see where we can support or what we can we can do for the game. So I have a section for bedroom later, so we'll, we'll get down to that later. Um, so this is kind of our motto. Uh, we embrace working with big and small developers and publishers. So again, uh, one of the kind of emphasis I'd like to make here in person really is that um, Nintendo don't actually care about labels. We don't care about what company you work for, you know, how big is the revenue, etc. We do not care about we just care about your content. Um, so whether you are a AAA publisher, great, or you're a one-bedroom developer, we just want to see your game. If it's good, we want to talk to you. If it's not, maybe another time. Um, so our focus really is not who you are, but what you are making or you're bringing. Um, and that's really, really important for us. Um, and this is actually our corporate motto. Uh, together with you, we want to put smiles on the faces of everyone we touch. It sounds a bit funny, I know. Um, <laughs> and this is not a literal sense, but um, what we mean by smile um, is basically we want to make everybody happy. And it's, it's difficult to do that um, because someone's always kind of paying for other people's gains in, in most industries. But I think in video games industry, it's a rare place where vast majority of people can be happy um, and our goal really is to um, make everyone happy and that when we mean that it's not just the, the game developers it's not the publishers but we want the platform holders we want the gamers we want the retail partners everybody to be happy saying oh i'm glad you know my business was with nintendo mm -hmm. and that's what we're trying to go for um, you know, even if you're involved a tiny weeny bit, if that made you a bit happier, then that's that's kind of our goal fulfilled. Um, so before um, we go into a bit more of explanatory stuff, um, I'd like to do a quick Nintendo trivia. So 
It's a quiz for you. You may know, you may not know. Uh, when was Nintendo established? 1889? That's a lot. That's quite a lot. 1947? In computers and all that? 74. Yeah. Okay. That's close to my birthday. <laughs> so, the answer is 1889. Oh. Um, it started way back um, before most people think, and this was actually the first building uh, of Nintendo. Uh, we're unfortunately not in this office anymore, but the spirit is in this office. Um, and it started as a... Uh, actually, I'll, I'll get to that later. Uh -huh. So, so this is actually what um, our offices look like. It's, it looks far more boring, to be honest. But, um, so we have a headquarters in um, Kyoto, uh, Nintendo Incorporated Limited. So we call this NCL. Uh, it's kind of, uh, it sounds cooler when you say that. Instead of saying Nintendo Japan, you say NCL. Um, and this is in Kyoto. So that's where our main headquarters is. Um, and then in uh, Redmond, which is basically next to Seattle uh, in Washington State, uh, we have Nintendo of America. Um, and then finally, we have Nintendo of Europe uh, in Frankfurt. So these three headquarters actually evenly divide work globally. So um, I think Nintendo is kind of unique that way, where Nintendo Japan, which is the main thing, NCL, doesn't actually handle everything, uh, but it only actually looks after Japan and Asia. Uh, Nintendo of America obviously look after the American market, Canadian and Latam, um, and Nintendo of Europe basically have everything else. Um, and this is the same with business partners. Um, so for instance, if a, a, a developer from India wants to speak to Nintendo, they don't go to NCL, they don't go to NOA, but they come to NOP. And it's the same with South Africa for some reason. Even New Zealand is ours. I, I don't know how it geographically connects. Um, <laughs> historically, it, it actually boils down to the good old NTSC power systems for TVs, if any of you know this. <laughs> um, and this is why Australia is still part of NOE. It's a, a long old story. Um, but this is how we work. So, coming down to trivia two. So, what did Nintendo make in 1889? So, raise your hands if you think it's Game & Watch. <laughs> Playing cards? <laughs> oh, okay. oh, it's it's Game Boy. Boy. No? Okay. Not Game Boy, that's fine. <laughs> okay, this one was easier. Okay, so it was uh, Playing Cards. Um, it was actually um, not the Playing card you know, but something called Hanakura uh, that were wildly played in Japan since the 1900s um, up to now. Um, and it actually originates from Portuguese kata, um, which was probably imported to Japan in 1500s, when Portuguese actually first contacted Japanese for the first time as a Westerner. Um, and the, the kata was imported into Japan and it kind of evolved into something that doesn't look anything like anything the Portuguese knew. Mm -hmm. um, and it became, you know, these playing cards that people used. Um, and obviously the, the playing cards we know are the Western playing cards. Japanese didn't know this until fairly recently, like 100 years ago or something. Um, so this is what Nintendo used to make. Um, and we still do manufacture these. You can still buy them, made by Nintendo in Kyoto. Um, it's a very small part of our business now, but um, because it's so fundamental and core to us, we maintain this business. I don't know if it makes any profit, but it doesn't really matter anymore. Um, but yeah, so that was it. And Nintendo was actually the first company to manufacture the Western playing cards in Japan. So we're, we're very innovative like that. Um, so I guess this might be redundant. Um, what is Nintendo Switch? I might skip this depending on how much you know. Do you know Nintendo Switch? Yeah, a little bit. Do you want to explain what the device does? No? Okay, you've got one. Okay, let's, let's skip this. <laughs> well, because this was, you know, prepared for people who don't know, you know, who may not know what Nintendo Switch was. So I'm going to skip all this handheld mode, tabletop mode, what you can do, etc. Uh, Nintendo Switch family. Actually, no, we do have three different models now. Uh, Nintendo Switch, what we call the flagship model. Nintendo Switch Lite, um, and then Nintendo Switch OLED model. Um, I don't have the OLED model yet, um, but my, my first flagship model is still fine, but the battery is getting a bit old. 
I think had about two hours of that. Um, it was first launched um, in March 2017, so that was more than six years ago. It's really getting on now. Um, and since then, um, we have sold over 125 million units. And that was at the end of May 2023. So I think we've got to about 130 by now. Um, so it's definitely one of the best selling consoles ever, um, probably only second to PS2 and maybe DS. Uh, we're catching up um, and in a couple of years, I think we'll, Nintendo Switch will be the best selling console in history for now anyway. Um, so yeah, this was a, you know, a, a pleasant surprise, I guess, for us um, coming out of Wii U, um, which I think sold 9 million units in its life cycle. So it's quite different, 9, nine to 125 in one generation. Um, and this is the very rough regional share um, of how many of these Nintendo Switch units sell. So Americas, so that's North America, included Canada and LATAM, um, are about 39% of the whole market. Um, and then Japan alone um, is about 23% of the market. Um, and incidentally, in Japan, I think 90% of console business is Nintendo. Um, so that's probably why it's so high at 23%. Um, and Europe is about 26% of the business for us. Um, the major um, proportion of this 26% boils down to uh, the UK, France and Germany. Uh, those three countries are probably around 70-75% of the European business for us, um, especially France. Um, France, we have a very similar situation to Japan, where I think about 80% of the console business is Nintendo in France. Um, whereas other countries like Italy, not so much. Um, they're very PlayStation-centric. Um, and then the others um, here include uh, Nordic States, um, and I think some distribution partners uh, that we don't directly work with, but still obviously sell consoles in Europe. And that includes South Africa. Um, so that's kind of how the market's looking like. Um, these slides are a bit old, so excuse me if they look a bit old, because they are. But games people play on Nintendo Switch. So what we are trying to really say here um, is that, okay, of course, Nintendo console, Nintendo content is going to be big, but the very stark difference between previous consoles uh, from Nintendo to Nintendo Switch is the strength of third-party titles. Again, these are older titles. I haven't updated them for a while. It's a bit lazy, but um, even then, you know, I, I did this a few years ago, and even then it was full of titles and publishers ha that had never come to Nintendo platform before. Um, and this is so much more true right now, where I think there's not a single publisher out there that, you know, everybody commonly knows that aren't on Switch. Uh, this was really not the case before. Um, if you kind of rewind the clock back to DS days or Wii, Wii days, um, you know, only 10 years ago, um, there were many publishers, even major publishers, um, you know, multi-billion dollar publishers that didn't do any business with Nintendo. This was quite normal. Um, and now it's, it's you know, Every third party partner I think I know is on Switch um, and we have so many indie titles as well. Uh, I think Nintendo Switch has managed to become like a go-to indie platform. Uh, you know, on PC, okay, you have Steam, but on, in consoles, I think Switch is really the indie console right now. Um, and we have so many good content um, on Nintendo Switch. Um, and I speak to many indie developers um, around Europe and the world, and they all say, well, actually, um, you know, Switch sales and Steam sales are neck and neck. Um, sometimes Switch outsells Steam, sometimes Steam outsells Switch, but, you know, we're, we're in a good position with indie titles. Um, and this is not really coincidence. Um, and again, um, Nintendo has kind of learnt 
from its past mistakes. Um, in the past, it was a very difficult platform to work with. It was a very difficult company to work with, maybe. Um, and it's not because they didn't want to talk to anybody. Again, it's probably due to lack of resources, but okay, we have re-diverted a lot of our resources into dealing with indie partners. Um, part of the reason I'm here. Um, and also because we've got this momentum that Nintendo Switch is recognized as a go-to place for indie, so we want to keep this going. Um, so we're, we're putting a lot of effort into supporting indie partners and trying to make their lives easier on Nintendo Switch. Um, we do other major um, initiatives like Indie World. Um, so we had this regionally four or five years ago. Uh, we used to have Indie World, uh, we used to have Indie Highlights, we used to have uh, Nindies, I think. Um, but in each Nintendo headquarters had their own showcases. So it was kind of all over the place in a way. Um, but now it's unified, it's a global initiative. Um, when you're chosen for Indie World, it's aired everywhere in the world at the same time. Um, and it's, it's a really, really popular show. Um, millions of people watch it. Um, of course, it's you know the viewers are high, but also it's something that you know every media is going to then pick up on, talk about. Um, major influencers usually do a reaction video of Indie World, so it really cascades down to millions of views and exposures. Um, so you know this is something that we're really keen on keeping up with, um, and then you know other games like. I mean, we do have some free-to-play titles uh, available on Switch 2. Um, but overall, we have over 9,000 games on Switch now. I think it's actually more like 10,000. Um, the fact our eShop can't really handle it anymore is a different story. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> but, the fact, but we do have over 10,000 games. Um, and this is something we did not even imagine that could be possible. Um, I think when we were planning... Um, about the new platform when Wii U was still around. Maybe we were thinking, ah, oh, 500 games on third parties, including indies, would be a, a good day. Um, and now we're seeing over 10,000 um, games on Switch. So it's been great. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're keen, to, keen to keep this up and, and keep the momentum going. And uh, Another reason why I wanted to talk to you uh, directly is to just let you know how easy it is to actually publish a game on Nintendo Switch. Um, we don't have any concept approvals or anything anymore. Um, we did in the past, um, but now if you're given Switch access, which frankly speaking isn't really difficult to get, I don't know if any of you have ever applied um, for a kit and wasn't granted one, we can probably help you on that. Um, and uh, it's relatively straightforward. We have an array of tools um, on the uh, developer portal um, that can help you publishing. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really not difficult anymore. You can get your dev kit. You can, you know, if you have a game already, it should be relatively easy to port. I mean, your engine runs, Unity runs, Game Maker runs, you know, all sorts of game engines run on Switch. We have support team that can help you if you hit a wall um, or if you have a certain SDK issues. You know, we have all these support um, that we can provide. So if you haven't started already, you know, the time is definitely right. Um, so if you do want to make your first step into that, then the first step is to get yourself registered. Um, on developer.nintendo.com uh, where you can basically just do a quick uh, entity registration um, and then you can uh, apply for access. Um, it's actually all automated now, um, so no one's actually looking at it saying yes or no. Um, but, you know, there, there are certain criteria that, um, that needs fulfilling um, and then if you if we recognize that you are a, a genuine developer of video games, then you'll be granted and then you'll be able to order dev kits uh, online. They're not very expensive. They're three digits in terms of cost. You know, they're not, they're not thousands of euros. Um, and that's actually enough to start um, publishing on the Nintendo uh, Switch. 
Um, I'm going to skip the hardware features because it's old news. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, C++, industry standard tools, basic dev kit, so you can set up cost, you can purchase a kit on the developer portal. Uh, very inexpens inexpensive, so when you order, um, the order comes to our Frankfurt headquarters. I think the cheapest one is like 500 euros, so it just costs like two switches basically. Um, SDK, technical support, certification, um, all these supports are available. And if you didn't know, um, publishing on Nintendo Switch is free of charge. So no matter how many times you submit, um, we, will, we will not charge you until your title is published. Um, and we, we only basically get any sort of revenue from the revenue share um, of the titles sold on the eShop. Um, that's where that's the only place where we actually charge anything um, and it's basically the industry standard uh, share in terms of revenue share um, and then yeah tools middleware we have engines unreal game maker um, all the middleware that you probably know should work um, and then kind of quickly moving on to how to publish a game <coughs> for nintendo switch side by said register yourself as a publisher um, and then you register your title under the publisher name that you've just registered to. Um, and then age ratings used to be a pain, um, but of course now we have IARC. It's fairly simple. Um, it's, if your title is digital only, um, it can still be a bit cumbersome if you have retail um, versions, but I think for the vast majority of indies, uh, it's usually just digital. Um, and then the trend I'm seeing is that if you do have physical releases, it's kind of like a special edition, collector's edition, um, and you tend to do this with a partner, like you know certain publishers who specialize in lim limited, collectible um, physical editions. So I think that's probably a wise way of doing it, rather than risking inventory um, and all these scary things um, if you're starting out new. Um, and of course, if you're doing physical, you need all these uh, PEGI, OSK, ESRB, you know, all these things, uh, Zero if you're doing it in Japan. So it's, it's an extra layer of complications. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, it's an option uh, if you want to do it. And then once your game is ready, um, you then submit your title to what we call Lock Check. Um, it's the equivalent of FQA and other platforms. Um, and then, yeah, they will get back to you within five working days from submission. Um, and obviously you have to remember that they're not a QA service, so they're not going to tell you exactly what's wrong. If you fail, they'll say it failed because, and then you have to fix it before you can resubmit the game. Um, they'll not find any faults in your game. Um, they're just looking for compliances and guideline violations. They're not looking at whether your game works or not. That's not their interest. Um, and this also is true to all other published games on Nintendo Switch at the moment. Um, you know, I occasionally see articles um, talking about quality of games on Nintendo Switch um, on the eShop. Some are a bit questionable um, sometimes. Um, but we don't actually control the content um, on the eShop. Um, as I said, we don't have concept approval. So once you're approved as a, a publisher, and as long as you have age ratings, which we basically rely on to make decisions that this game can be public um, in public domain, um, we say, okay, well, if age rating says it can be shown to a 12 year old, we believe you, you know, we, we provide the facility for you to publish this game. Um, and yeah, so this is, this is why uh, we don't actually say or comment on what you're doing. So this is why if you sometimes see certain um, content on our platform, whether we like it or not, aside, um, we don't control what goes up there anymore. Um, and this is just how it works now. Uh, and then, yeah, submission. This is all kind of the same. You submit the assets, metadata, um, and then, yeah, that's how it kind of
kind of goes. And then for the digital release, again, we have the agency model. So uh, the, the publisher basically is responsible for everything in terms of release date, content, pricing, you know, pre-order or not, etc. We don't comment on any of that. It's entirely up to you. Um, whether you want to do a sale or not, or you want to do a discount at this certain time for a certain period, all up to you. We don't get involved in any of that. Um, and then you're able to obviously then see the daily download tracking, monthly sales reports. Um, you can also see the wish list number um, and etc. Uh, physical releases, as I said, um, additional steps. Um, you have to basically order the cartridges from Nintendo. This is an OEM manufacturing done by us. Um, they are still made in Kyoto, believe it or not. <laughs> So you order the cartridges, uh, we make the cartridges for you, we then put the game in there, and then we drop them in uh, Osaka Airport, I think, and then we just go, there you go, that's it. And then you pick them up, you package them, and then you sell them, that's how it works. Uh, we used to do the packaging uh, as well um, in, in Europe, but we stopped that because it was just too much work for us. Um, so yeah, that's... That's how it kind of works. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's usually better if you work with an experienced distributor or a publisher um, because it's, it's quite a lot of work when it comes to logistics, um, picking up and packaging, assembly, distribution, oh God. Um, and then back to Bedran. All right, thanks Mao. Uh, yes, back to me. So basically what Mao said, everything is finished. Then our team jumps in. Like I said, we are four people at the moment. Um, this is our mail address uh, where you can, can reach us, like mentioned before. So um, there are several tools that are available for you to um, support selling and marketing your titles. So basically here uh, you can see the overview. Um, you can do a demo so people can try your game before buying it. Uh, you can set up um, your game for pre-order so consumers can purchase it before the actual release. Um, you can run a price promotion. You can set up an owner discount to users who own title, title A and get title B for less. And um, you can promote your release um, with media partners and Nintendo will provide uh, free download, code, download codes for that. I guess it's around 200 at the moment, right? Uh, it's 200 for Europe, uh, yeah. 50 for Australia, New Zealand, and I think 50 for Japan and 250 for North America. All right, yeah. And uh, yeah, finally, there is the Nintendo Switch News Channel. Um, this tool is unique to Nintendo Switch. So um, with that, you can share information with, with anyone who has purchased the game or, or, or played your demo all directly on Nintendo Switch itself. So I will show you on the next slides how it looks. Uh, yeah, basically the Nintendo eShop um, on Nintendo uh, Switch is the primary place for, for consumers to purchase software digitally. So in addition, consumers um, will also be able to purchase content from Nintendo's main portal websites like Nintendo.com, the UK site, Italy, etc. And uh, like Mao said, Nintendo eShop is available in many, many countries and regions. Uh, it's 31 countries within Europe. Then we have South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, the US, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Japan, like many, many countries. And um, basically consumers can pay with credit cards, PayPal or prepaid Nintendo eShop cards, which uh, are available at retail. Yes, so this is how the um, interface looks. So users launch Nintendo eShop right from the Nintendo Switch home screen. I bet you saw this uh, many, many times already. Um, this is how the Nintendo eShop looks. The storefront has been designed to be easy to use. So the following categories are available. Like um, you can see, uh, it starts with search. So you can search the shop by title, name, keyword, price range, and more filters. Uh, there are recent releases, so there are at the moment 60 slots with recently released titles. This can uh, be extended to show all titles available on the store with a customized sort order. 
then we have the um, point discover. This is a section curated by the Nintendo eShop team to help users uh, find great content. Then we have the current offers. Uh, this means all titles that are available at a discount sorted by the number of downloads. Then we have uh, charts, uh, which is basically two categories like all games and download only games, each with the 30 best uh, selling titles over the last two weeks. And last but not least, we have the um, coming soon uh, section where all upcoming titles sorted by release dates will be shown. And um, note that the discover category is the only category created by Nintendo itself. All other categories are fully automated. And just up to this point, um, Nintendo do not sell ads. Uh, we don't believe in it. Um, and we, we try to treat every release equally. Because again, it boils down to the thing I said at the beginning. We don't want to favor big publishers, people with big money. So this is exactly why we don't do ads. Um, and we don't accept money to have a bigger placement. Everybody gets treated the same way. Um, except for in the Discover Shop, which is curated. Um, this is by the content team, which are independent from the business team to keep the fairness. Um, and then, of course, the charts will reflect what's selling. That we don't control, um, and this is up to your title. Um, so that's kind of the, the only way um, we can kind of change what's on the shop. Otherwise, it comes in order of releases, um, and then they get over as soon, I guess. Um, as, as the time goes, especially in the coming soon section, as, as soon as the title launches, it's not on the coming soon section anymore. We have this one, but uh, yes, what I mentioned before, the Nintendo Switch news channel. This one is uh, important for publishers to understand this channel. Um, it is the main place on Nintendo Switch where gamers are promoted. And here users can get information about new and existing content. So the main news channel is, like I said, created by Nintendo for all users. It covers both Nintendo and uh, titles from our publishing partners. And publishers can create their own little specific news channels, which users can subscribe to. And uh, users are automatically subscribed to the news channel of the title they buy. So yeah, you can... Um, access the Nintendo Switch news directly from the home menu. It's the first um, icon on the bottom side. And uh, like I said before, the interface is really easy to use. You browse um, game-related articles in the timeline. Um, news articles cover a wide, wide range of uh, topics. Um, for example, highlighted game, information about a DLC or an update with new content. Um, sometimes a developer interview, interview about the sale or how to play the, the game, um, tips and tricks for the game as well. So yeah, the articles mainly contain context, um, graphics, a video and links to game pages on Nintendo eShop, and um, only articles in channels you have subscribed to will appear in the timeline. So this is also nice. Um, yeah, it's a bit old, uh, but um, the news is very important. <laughs> like I said, a tool for publishers. So we strongly recommend that you create your own news channels for your titles to let uh, Switch users know about your games. 